We are back and we're heading into my favorite little town in Alaska. Fell in love with it. And Michael is here to share with us what to see and do in our very, very short time in Ketchikan. But you don't want to miss a thing. So Michael, tell us where we should go, what we should do and what we should see in this very short time. Little quick segue, we're going to leave Glacier Bay at 3 p.m. the day before we go to Ketchikan. Go back out there and look for whales and sea otters because we're going through the exit where you could see the whales at 6 a.m. So from 3 to 4.30, one of the best places in Alaska to see sea otters that look up and wave at you as we go by with those button noses and old man whiskers and uh, usually some humpbacks at that time. A uh, good night for a sunset when um, we're heading south to Ketchikan. So Skagway and Glacier Bay are our northernmost uh, parts of the tour. And then now the ship is heading south, Ketchikan, Victoria, back to Seattle. So as we're going south, pop out for sunset, give Northern Lights another shot because we're still pretty far north. And then 6 a.m., we arrive in Ketchikan, third Alaska and final Alaska port, the favorite of many, including Lisa, who's going to move there next year. <laughs> yeah. okay. And it's an amazing little town. It's two miles long by two blocks wide. And again, another mountain barrier town squeezed in at the base of Big Deer Mountain. So many wonderful things to do. You can flight see or take a boat to nearby Misty Fjords, which is unlike Glacier Bay, that's a big wide bay. Misty Fjords is the classic serpentine twisting narrow fjord like you would see in Norway. So whether you go by airplane or boat in there, <clears throat> the, the float plane will land. You step out on the float and you hear silence roar in your ears. It's so hard anymore in this world to find a place that's totally quiet. And you can hear the wind moving through an eagle's feathers. That's how quiet it is there. You might see some wildlife from the plane or from the boat. That's a great tour. I hope the deadliest catch, the Discovery Channel TV show, will be back up and running after COVID. They have a crab boat, and that's actually one of the boats from the TV show that rolled completely over in a rogue 50 foot wave in uh, the Bering Strait. And it was filmed as part of the TV show. So instead of trashing the boat, they rebuilt it for education. And they take you out, about 50 people, great for kids. And they, the, the, the deckhands that are working the educational boat now We'll pull every creature out of the sea, octopus, crabs, and do a show and tell, put the creature back. And the great thing about that tour, Deadliest Catch tour, is the last 20 minutes, they chum the water with dead fish parts and guts. Dozens of bald eagles come out of the trees like a dinner bell has just been rung. And the wingtips graze your nose as they pick up these fish parts. People have gotten National Geographic Discovery Channel videos of that many eagles just dive bombing out of the sky and hitting the water with their talons open. So that is a great tour as well. So I would say if I had to pick the top two, that would probably, you know, be the two good ones for Catch Camp. Well, wow, yeah, because we aren't going to really have time to go in unless you want to catch breakfast in Ketchikan, um, because we're really going to get in at six and we have to be out by noon. And, and folks, just so you remember, um, I know I've told a lot of my groups this already, you know, they're going to tell you to be back on the ship at 1130 and they're not kidding. Um, because at 12 a.m. or 12 noon, they are going to depart with or without you. Um, so you got to make the most of your time. There's a lot of great things to see. Um, and Ketchikan, I mean, the, if nothing else, when you've got to be on deck, like Michael says, because the colorful buildings that await you are incredible. I mean, it just brings you alive and it, it's just telling you that you're, you're home, I guess. And if you don't want to feel rushed or stressed, <clears throat> with the short time that you will have in Ketchikan, one of the great things you can do is walk to Creek Street 
which is in the center of Ketchikan. You can't miss it. There's a sort of a rusty metal bridge. And then you'll see an archway, it'll say Creek Street. And all the shops on stilts on the boardwalk used to be brothels. <laughs> and, you know, in fact, there's a saying that uh, Alaska is where salmon and men both went upstream to spawn. <laughs> So the brothels have now all been turned into shops because I think the oldest profession was outlawed in 1959, I think, in Alaska. So they converted it to shops. So you walk down the boardwalk through the shops and just follow the river because September 3rd through the 10th is going to be the peak of the salmon run. And you can have a beautiful hike for an hour, hour and a half along the stream the further north you go above Creek Street, the more fish there are. You might see a black bear pulling a salmon, bald eagles in the treetops, and stand on every bridge across the stream. That water is gin, crystal clear, and you will see thousands of salmon, like three feet long, all packed in, going home to spawn. It's beautiful. And then if you take the salmon stream all the way up, it ends at a beautiful totem pole heritage center where you can see a half dozen totem poles from the Clinket culture that are great to photograph. So that's kind of a nice walking tour. You also get to see the, the town, the houses. And it's funny that in a rain, Ketchikan gets the most rain anywhere in the United States. I think Hawaii does get more rain in one or two places, but Ketchikan can average 200 inches of rain a year. <laughs> but what I've noticed in cold or rainy places People paint their houses bright colors because they want to fend off that gloom and doom of, you know, overcast and cloudy weather all the time. Yeah. Our friends actually took a Creek Street tour, and one of the stops was to watch a totem pole being made by the Clinket um, culture. So, so oh, yeah. Lisa, that, I'm so glad you mentioned that because this is another thing you can do on your own or you can do it as a tour is you go three miles from where the cruise ship docks to a place called Saxman Village. And the Clinket natives actually live and work there. And they have gathered up about 25 totem poles in the wilderness in the inside passage that were all falling over and decomposing. And they restored them and they put them in one place in a totem park. Oh, So it's amazing. And then the Michelangelo of the totem pole carvers Nathan Jackson. Oh my God, this guy, he is, he gets $5,000 a foot to carve a 60 foot long totem pole commissioned by a university or a bank. Go see him. He's in a carving shed to the right of Totem Park. And if you go in and, you know, leave a donation, you can take some pictures of him. And last time I saw him, he said, Mark, I can't die. I have too much work. <laughs> He's invented tools and just to see the magnificent art stretched out, you know, horizontally uh, before him as he is carving away. And he's now teaching his son. He's passing on everything he's learned. So Saxman Village, if you want to get immersed in the native culture, they also have a gift shop there, all kind of good totem poles. And the money goes to the native people instead of only getting a small cut, like in, you know, a lot of the stores in the other towns. So, well, that's good to know, because that's actually where we found the authentic um, totem poles that we purchased was mm. in a small shop off the beaten path. Right. Um, they're only open certain times. They knew the history. Um, you know, they were able to recite most of that knowledge. And, um, you know, we didn't we didn't get a great big one because first of all, you got to bring it back, right? And we have to right. fly home, but, but yeah. And we learned a lot of the history in that little tiny shop. Um, and so I, I was just blessed that they were still open um, because they were getting ready to close for the season. So, um, but it was just incredible. If anybody's hungry, should we mention a couple of restaurants? You can? betcha, you betcha. Because you know, if you're up early and you have breakfast, let's say at 5, 5.30 a.m., because you want to be one of the first off at 6, you know, you're going to be hungry at about 11, let's say, and you still have time to get a bite to eat in town and then head back to the ship before we leave. There's a, a little series of shops. It's a two-story building called um, the Salmon Center. And behind there are two restaurants. One is called the Fish House. 
and the other is called a catch can crab and grill. And again, fresh seafood galore, including the king crab and, you know, halibut. And um, <clears throat> Ketchikan is the salmon capital of the world because they're so far south. All those salmon that are pouring into the stream, they're all around in the ocean as well. So yeah. that would be last call. I mean, you can still get seafood in Victoria, but last call if you want to have the authentic Alaskan experience of the fresh seafood. So yeah. fish house or catch can crab and grill. Sounds great. Well, and that's, I was going to say too, that's a great reminder. You know, I want to shout out to a, a, and I'll take my group to that little store if they want to know. It's really like tiny. I mean, it's a little tiny shop on the corner of a street and you can order salmon. They ship it for free um, back to the U.S. or for a nominal fee. Um, and it's all fresh. It's packaged. It's sent. And um, you just tell them when you're going to be home, because remember, this is not frozen or um, anything like that. So if you want to get your fresh fish sent to you, they can do it. And, um, but I'll make sure you guys know where that is and I'll make sure to take you. Also, if anybody wants to go salmon fishing, you have time while we're there and it's a princess tour and it's incredible in Ketchikan because again, you're further south, all five species of salmon are there. And if you catch a fish, which undoubtedly you will, princess, it's called hook, you hook, we cook. Princess will cook your fish for you in the dining room and you can eat what you caught a few hours before, whether it's lunch or dinner, you know, and yep. you can send half of the fish home and have it, you know, smoked or whatever as well. So if there are any men in your party that want to do some fishing or wet a line, catch can would be the place. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing what we can do in Ketchikan. Our next stop, Victoria, and then we're almost home and it's making me sad just feeling like we're headed home and it's almost over. Um, but hang tight, everyone. We're going to be back. And You're we're doing gonna two cruises to back to back, aren't you? Oh, I wish. I would live uh, on the cruise ship. I, you know, I asked somebody, funny you should say that, Michael. I asked somebody, because we had a lot of people on the last cruise I was on, and they said, yeah, for those of you doing back to back cruises, this is what we need you to do. And I said, so tell me more about that, because I want to know more. Uh, as soon as I'm retired, that is something I want to do. I want to try a back to back, because I can only imagine how exciting that would be to not ever have to leave, right? Right. And to know we're going back. So you've got the uh, Tai Chi master. You could live aboard eventually. <laughs> we could. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> I tell you, I am all for that. So and you know what's funny about like staying on the ship for five months for the Alaska season? Time goes much faster at sea than it does on land. And we joke and we call it. You remember that old movie Groundhog Day? Uh-huh. Where you get it, the guy gets up, Bill Murray, and it repeats yep. the same day. We call it Groundhog Week. Monday, Juno, Tuesday, Skagway. But it's totally different. The people, the customers are different every week, even though they're yeah. from the yeah. same areas. But it flies by. It just because yeah. you're having so much fun, you know. I know we are. So, all right, folks, hang tight. Michael's coming back. We're going to talk about our next stop. And I will tell you, on my last cruise, we didn't get to go to Victoria because, you know, COVID and Canada was not accepting the ships. And so this is going to be new for me. So I and I have not been to Victoria, believe it or not, we live in the Pacific Northwest and I have not been to Victoria. So we're excited to hear. So hang tight. We'll be back.